One type of vibration testing is random testing. What makes random testing unique is that the amplitude of the random waveform at a specific time cannot be predicted. We say random vibration is non-deterministic. That is, it displays different characteristics for every test run. The peak accelerations shown in this graph here are unique to this specific test. If we were to repeat the random vibration test, these kinds of peaks at a particular time cannot be reproduced. But the trouble is test engineers still need to approximate what are the peak vibration levels of that test in order to avoid over or under testing. A tool that test engineers use to help them approximate vibration levels is the probability distribution function. The probability density function or probability distribution function is a histogram of a signal's probable variation distribution. That is, what is the likelihood of a particular level of vibration to occur? The distribution is usually in a normalized form displayed as the number of standard deviations from the mean or from the average. And, th and so there are four important statistics of a random waveform that define its distribution function. These statistics are the mean, the variance, the skewness, and the kurtosis. The mean is the average, the average acceleration value. So on this plot here, the average is represented by this zero value. And variance is calculated as the average of the square difference from the mean. And so we might say that some points are one standard deviation from the mean or two standard deviations from the mean. That's its variance. Skewness is the spread of the values around that mean. In a Gaussian distribution, the points are distributed in a symmetrical way around the average. This center line here is a line of symmetry. But if it has any particular skewness, then this graph would be shifted a little bit, one side of the mean or the other. That would be skewness. The fourth statistical moment is called kurtosis. And that's how the peak acceleration values, um, the deviation of them from the mean. And we're going to develop that concept a little bit more in an upcoming video. For our purposes, we need to understand that random vibration testing assumes a Gaussian distribution of data. That is, if it's truly Gaussian, it will be symmetrical around the mean, no skewness. It'll have a kurtosis value of 3, and a truly Gaussian distributed set of data will have 68.3% of its points, or in our case of vibration data, 68.3% of the vibration peaks are going to land within one standard deviation of the mean. And 95.4% of those peak vibrations will be within two standard deviations of the mean. And 98.7% of the peak vibrations will be within three standard deviations of the mean. That's the idea of Gaussian distribution. And it's a very important principle and concept as it relates to random vibration. Modern vibration controllers assume a control signal has Gaussian distribution. And that assumption can prove to have some difficulties. We will cover that in an upcoming video. For now, we must understand random vibration testing is non-deterministic. You cannot reproduce in the time domain the exact same peak accelerations. But we do need to know roughly what is the probability of having certain uh, vibrations. And this probability density function is helpful in showing that there's a certain probability of having the this average 
acceleration and other accelerations that are beyond one or two or three de uh, standard deviations of that mean, what are their relative probabilities?